and welcome to my Xbox and Me, episode 300. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Two Fresh Crash. Crash, how are you? Hello, hello. I'm doing good. See, I went to you this week instead of Matt first because you've been here longer. That's why I went to you first, Crash. That is why. You are super important to me and I appreciate <laughs> everything you've done for this podcast. I hope you know that. Yeah, but like last week you went to Matt first. Yeah, I did. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm hurting over that. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. still a little offended. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. We've also got the one and only Mr. Matt P video. Matt, how are you? I'm very good. Happy 300th birthday, everybody. We well, did it. We made it. Kind of, you know, because I messed up the week. So it's actually two, 300 last week, but we called we that, don't two, talk about that. We called that 299.5. <laughs> and of course, our very special guest, all the way in America. We don't count Crash as American because he's one of us. Uh, Mr. Ryan McCaffrey from IGM. Ryan, how are you? I'm well, my friend. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, this is this has been a long time in the making in my head. I only asked you not too long ago, but I was like, all right, <laughs> I try and do a special guest every 50 episodes, usually 300, 350, big numbers, boom. Yeah. And as soon as I What's came it? on, uh, yeah, as soon as I came on IGN, I was like, I'm going to ask Ryan. And everyone's like, when's Ryan on the show? Come on. I was like, don't <laughs> worry. The time will come and we, we've managed to get it done. And we have you nice and early for you this morning to talk all things xbox but before we do that let's get the housekeeping out of the way if you don't know my xbox and me is our weekly xbox podcast here on youtube.com slash my xbox and me and across all podcast services the way itunes works with getting us charted if you are someone coming in new we need your reviews please 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 give us five star drop a nice review let us know how much you love the show or oh, don't, but just give us the five stars anyway. We'd appreciate it. And keep <laughs> it moving. Remember, if you want to get the show early, head over to patreon.com slash mcfixer. And if you really want to do us a side, go subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash me. We've got Let's Plays, we've got opinion pieces, and of course, you get the full podcast and highlights on that channel. Big shout out to our Patreon producers, Erin Guard and FNH Paul. But you've heard enough about that. Let's talk all things Ryan. Ryan, once again, Thank you so much for being here. We do appreciate it. For someone who doesn't know you or what you do, how do you summarize who Ryan McCaffrey is? Oh, man. <laughs> well, number one, I'm sorry that they're, that they're watching or listening to this and they're like, who is this guy? Why is he on the 300th show? That makes no sense. Couldn't you have gotten literally anyone else? I mean, we did, uh, we did no, try I, for Phil, but, you know, he was a little bit busy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I am a, I'm the barnacle on the side of Xbox games media at this point. You can't scrape me off. I've been, uh, I've been in the, the world of Xbox for, uh, I guess I'm coming up on 19 years. I started in fall of 2002 at Official Xbox Magazine. I was an editor there for just shy of 10 years before I moved to IGN where I've now been, I just passed nine years at IGN. So, uh, yeah, I've been I've been covering Xbox specifically for a long, long time, just about since the beginning, and it's just been so, so much fun over the years and just watching the, the brand, you know, grow and evolve and stumble and rise and shine and, and do all kinds of interesting things and come up with all sorts of unique games and experiences and... and, uh, and so that's me. I mean, I'm just I'm just hanging around covering this stuff, and I have a great time doing it. So my first my first interaction with you was uh, I didn't I didn't find the I was late to the internet, and I've been playing video games all my life. My dad owns a little game shop, so I've been around games forever. But the first time I ever interacted with you is I was watching podcast uh, Beyond. And I was an Xbox guy. And I was like, man, I really wish there was an Xbox version of that. And I tweeted at IGN, why is there not an Xbox version? And you popped up. It was like, there is. It's called Unlocked. Go listen to it. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And, and from then, I probably came in, oh... I don't know when what episode I came in, but very relatively early. But I was 18. I'm 26 now. 20, no, I'm not. I'm 28 now. Damn, I'm old. Oh, you're young now. I'm old. I'm <laughs> old. Um, but I've been listening to you forever. You was a big inspiration. It was you and Greg Miller. I always say you and Greg Miller are the big reasons why I started podcasting because especially Greg says it and I've heard you say it sort of before. It's like, anyone can do it you can just you've just got to start doing it yourself right like everyone exactly. can do it and we sit here 300 episodes going now nah, never missed a week and it's crazy my big question for you to start off with is you brought on myself and a few other content creators onto podcast unlocked which 
for us is a dream come true. I know for myself, especially someone who has been working independently getting into this. Why? Why? Why did you decide to bring on these content creators that you know enough about because you wouldn't just bring anybody on without doing your due diligence? Yeah. But what made you decide now was the right time to bring people on to Unlocked and share and really blow up? We our podcast after being on Unlocked really exploded. So what was your reasons behind that? Because I know it was you as the driving force. Well, it's, it's a couple things. I mean, number one, it's uh, the the events of last year uh not that they are new but 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 really caused me to look inward and go wait a second this podcast that i've been hosting for eight years i guess at the time it's it's three white dudes and and one young woman so it's like that's that's not representative of our audience and yeah. so it's all right, all right let's there are other voices out there let's make sure they're heard so you know that that's really that's really the driving force. And and the thing is, it wasn't just to, I wasn't trying to check a box or anything. It's, no. it's like, it really, you know, I, I've like, I've had my opportunity for years. I like, I, at some point I like, I would walk away from unlocked if it meant, you know, if that were, there will be a day where I do that because yeah. it's, you know, I've had my time you know I've, I'm 40 years old and I've been hosting Xbox podcasts for, over a decade, because we I started I I my first podcast was was KOXM Radio, which I know your your audience is probably largely British. Uh, nope, mainly K American. Is, <laughs> it's a radio. It's it's a radio play yeah. basically. It's a it's a radio reference to American radio. Got you. And uh, that was early '06. So it's like I've been wow. podcasting now for 15 years, and I've done. I mean, I guess I'm. Well, I guess Xbox podcasts, I'm probably closing in on a thousand of them ah. uh, between OXM and, and IGN. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, um, it, it was about like, it, it shouldn't just be people that look like me. Yeah. And, uh, and and the thing is, the, the thing that I knew would happen that absolutely happened is Unlocked has been better than ever. I don't say that egomaniacally. I don't say that with an ego. But if you just, if you watch the, or listen to the show over the last year, with folks like yourself and, and all kinds of other guests and creators we've had on, it just brings a new, fresh energy and a fresh perspective and, and uh, a fresh point of view. And I mean, I've had more fun with it in the over the last year, and and our numbers show that it's doing better than ever. It's just, it's just something I wish I'd done years sooner, quite frankly. Yeah, honestly, it was for me. It's, I've been on there twice now, and. As a as a guy in England, obviously, who whose dream was my dream was always to go work for Kind of Funny when they split off. But first of all, it was to come work at IGN because I saw you, Greg, everybody. I'm like, this seems like the environment I want to be in. And then obviously empowering myself and doing it myself and then building what we've built here was like, okay, cool. And it's weird to even be sat here talking to you on a personal level. We exchange back and forth on Twitter and stuff to go, wow. Like this is this is really crazy. The gaming industry is super supportive. I think for me, my biggest worry coming onto a platform such as IGN's was I was super scared that the audience was just gonna eat me alive. That was that I knew I assumed the comments yeah, were going to be it. it didn't. And that was and that was the thing that that shocked me the most. But I think that I wanna give you guys credit for, especially you, is you put me in a place where I said I said it on I said it on this show I said it before like, after I came off of IGN I was like oh I feel like I've made it like I feel like I can hold my own while podcasting with other professionals in the industry now because I've done it with you guys I've done it with other companies as well and yeah. you really gave me that shot and my career has absolutely exploded since then so I want to just say a deep thank you for that because it really did help me immensely with confidence not that i don't really have a confidence problem anyway but it sort of just gave me that stamp of approval of like oh this guy can do it and lots of big things have come from that so seriously thank you so much i really do appreciate it oh it's i mean i am lucky to to sort of have a uh a, a bat signal that i get that i can shine in the sky from the roof of the ign tower as it were <laughs> and and i'm happy to to have put the the to put the MC fixer my Xbox and me logo in there for a couple times and <laughs> shine it up into the sky for our audience. That was a really horrific bat. No, it was brilliant. Like, it was brilliant. I was, was trying great. and it, was it just great. wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. I totally do, Matt. You've got a question, so please hit us with it. 
I do, I do. We have loads of questions for the community as well, and we're going to get to them in a second. But um, I did some digging, Ryan. I went back into the Uh-oh. archives of IGN to find some old school Ryan reviews and saw that <laughs> one of your first, maybe your first IGN review, I'm not sure, was for Steel Battalion. You gave it a three out that, of ten. Yeah, that was my first <laughs> review for IGN. Obviously, I've reviewed a million Xbox games at OXM, but coming over yes. to IGN, that happened to be the first game that I reviewed. What a delight. What a delight, I'm sure. But I was curious. It got me thinking, how do you feel about review scores in general now and, and how they've sort of changed over the years and now with like live service games and stuff like that? How do you feel about scoring? Is it a bit of an outdated thing at this point or do you still really enjoy giving a game a score and, and a definitive so much out of 10? I mean, I I don't have a problem with it. I think the, the audience perception of review scores, I think, has changed over time. Uh and, and I'm not like casting blame on the audience necessarily, but no. there, there has been. I mean, it's sort of a collective thing. It's not just an IGN issue. It's, it's the way. I mean, every outlet wields review scores differently and and sort of grades differently. Um, you know, I think part of it, but but I guess the the long and the short of it is, yeah. In in an ideal scenario, I, personally, I'm not speaking for IGN. I'm speaking for Ryan McCaffrey yeah. right now. I would prefer to get rid of review scores. But the audience finds them useful. They are yep. they are a useful thing to our audience, and our our job is to serve our audience who wants to know what you know what we think of these games, and and you know we can help them, we inform them as they consider a purchasing decision. Although even that's changing now with Game Pass, and it's more informing a should I download this <laughs> question. But uh, that's another matter entirely. So yeah, I mean. Uh, I think part of it is that we, there are so many games now. Like when I compare my career now to my career at OXM 10 years, well, yeah, 10 years ago I was at OXM. I was at the tail end of my run. So even you just, just a decade apart, back then we could cover literally every Xbox game. And we actually prided ourselves on doing that. We knew about everything. We'd written about everything. We like we had complete institutional knowledge of mm. everything happening in the world of Xbox. Fast forward 10 years, and while, yes, IGN is a multi-platform, we cover every every platform, not just Xbox, but even if we were to just cover Xbox and nothing else... There are two. There are so many games. I won't say too many. That's I don't that that has a carries a negative inference. And I don't mean that. But there are so many games, whether they're publishing through ID at Xbox or what have you. It's impossible to keep up with all of them. And so where I'm going with this is to say that, you know, we have limited resources as an editorial team. There are only so many of us. There are our, our freelance budget to to outsource certain reviews is only so much money every month. And so we can't, we cannot keep up with all the reviews. And as such, w- there are just games that we know our our audience isn't going to care about. Wh- and and plenty of those games are bad. Are are games that would yeah. get bad review scores. And so we don't review those. Yeah. And so I think a lot of that comes. So when people think, oh, you know, IGN, oh, you know, they they only use the top end of the review scale and a seven is bad you know only only a nine is is uh is like my starting point it's it's part of that is because it's just the the way that the industry has changed and we just can't keep up and so a lot of the games that would get negative poor (laughs) they'd get poor review scores they just get ignored they don't they get they don't get reviewed because we know our audience ultimately isn't going to care anyway so it's just there's a lot of factors to it but yeah like I'd love to get rid of review scores, but we're not going to because it, it is useful to our audience. And and yeah, there's uh, there's definitely the conversation around review scores has has definitely changed over the years. For sure. For sure. I wonder if I can just piggyback off that quickly. I know we're going to throw to more questions, but sure. have you thought then about how to review something like Halo Infinite, right? Which is yeah. free to play multiplayer, also a campaign that's on Game Pass or you can buy. And, and so there's those feel like two separate entities. Is is the plan yeah. to do two separate reviews to them? Do you even know yes. yet? Or yeah, uh, that's a great question, and and you actually did ask that initially, and I completely glossed over it, so I apologize. I <laughs> no, 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 no. back up. But yeah, our reviews editor Dan Stapleton, who is also a, a longtime veteran, he's been in the game almost as long as I have. Uh, he has done a tremendous job of trying of of doing his best, and I think successfully evolving what a review is at IGN and what form yeah. and shape it takes because 
we have been doing re-reviews. Not often. You know, we'll only, like, we re-reviewed Sea of Thieves is a good mm -hmm. Xbox example. Like, we reviewed it when it came out. You guys know it was, there was not a lot of there there. When it, you know, yeah. there, was, there was this amazing concept, but not a lot of uh, flesh on the bones, as it were. But over time, that has changed, and we re-reviewed it, I believe... I think it might have been right before the pandemic. I can't quite remember, but you can look it up if anybody's interested. And so, uh, yeah, and then with with big games like so, like Call of Duty every year uh, is, is a good example. And and this will apply to Halo Infinite, particularly given the free to play multiplayer and campaign that that has a price tag on it. Uh, yeah, we we do separate multiplayer and campaign reviews, and then also one overall review. Right. So. Uh, like I've reviewed, I don't know if I did last year, but I've, I've reviewed a couple of the recent Call of Duty campaigns. I'm not a multiplayer guy with Call of Duty specifically as much anymore the way I used to be in the, in the, you know, OG Infinity Ward days. But, uh, like Miranda Sanchez from, who's actually on Unlocked with me as well. She's a big time Call of Duty multiplayer player. And she, we, we've tag teamed a few of them. We actually, the Gears 5 review for IGN. Uh, I did the campaign review, she did the multiplayer review, and then I took took those and I did a, an overall review, folding it all into one final score, which was 9 out of 10 for Gears, because we're on the 10-point scale now. We've uh, we've walked away from the 100-point scale. So, yeah, that's, it, that's another way, because we know there are people like Halo Infinite's a great example. There are going to be people who might only care about the campaign or who might only care about that free-to-play multiplayer that for they're sure. going to download. So we will have separate reviews for those individually. And that's, and I'm not saying we're perfect. I'm not saying we can't be better, but we are doing our best to try and sort of evolve our review uh, process along with the way the industry itself and the distribution of games and the, the way they are released and monetized has, has evolved as well. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense, though. The way the way that you guys are doing it, especially if, if you're someone who doesn't enjoy multiplayer, right? Why would you, like, put that person in a position to then speak about it on a, on a big scale of, like, okay, well, I already know I don't like this. I already know this isn't for me. And then it's hard to then judge things in the right way, right? Bring in someone who does enjoy it, does know what they're talking about, and boom, you've got the best of both worlds, and you can, you can actually review it properly in a way sort of thing. Well, it's and quicker. And quicker, yeah. too, because, you know, if I'm going through the campaign of Gears 5 uh, and Miranda's while I'm doing that, Miranda's playing multiplayer, suddenly we can get we can get those reviews done much more quickly, which serves our audience rather than if it's just me doing it. Again, I am capable and, and willing to review Gears multiplayer. I've done it before many yeah. times, but it's it's just going to take longer if, if, if yeah. you have to wait for me uh, rather than. Uh, but then here comes Miranda in to to you know give her verdict on multiplayer so yeah it 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 serves us well and i think hopefully is serving the audience well too mm, interesting crash what about you what you got to ask um there's a franchise that's been associated tied really closely if you say killer Xbox. instinct i swear it's to not God. Not not <laughs> if you say killer instinct we're gonna have not, a problem it's not a killer instinct question. <laughs> <laughs> um halo i'm talking about halo what does Halo Infinite need for Ryan McCaffrey to be happy with it? Uh, it needs a it needs a great story. It needs a campaign that that is uh, that gives me something I haven't seen before. That that is uh, that can that is something I have not seen. That that does a better job than other first person shooters. Now, the the competition is kind of thin these days in the triple a first person shooter campaign department you know battlefield 2042 is not even doing a campaign this time around which is disappointing for me but certainly there are plenty of battlefield players who don't care obviously that's why ea and dice made that decision <laughs> but but i think halo i would argue that halo of the major first person shooter franchises your your battlefields your call of duties your um your dooms uh, your destinies, etc. Halo might be the one where people care a lot about both, of uh, both the campaign mm -hmm. and the multiplayer. There's, I mean, there there are people certainly that that care more about one or the other, but but Halo has has kept that campaign torch uh, lit for many years, and so that's 
you know, that's that's why I didn't like Halo 5. Uh, like, and I wish we had reviewed, I wish we had separate uh, uh, reviews for single player and multiplayer back with Halo 5. We hadn't quite evolved to that point yet. And so, I mean, I didn't review Halo 5, so I should I should clarify that. But yeah, like we could have, like if I had reviewed Halo 5 and we had done separate scores uh, uh, before doing one overall score, the, the campaign score would have suffered. So, uh, whereas the multiplayer still would have been a nine. But but yeah, that's what I'm looking for out of Halo Infinite. I want it to, I want it to wow me. I mean, that's, that's really it. Like, Halo 4, I think, still is is very underrated by the community and gets gets the short end of the stick because they weren't Bungie. But that campaign is phenomenal. And uh, and and that's the thing. The, the bar has always been set so high by every Halo with the campaign up until 5. That's why 5's campaign hurts so much. Mm. It's not that it was a bad game, but it was a pretty bad Halo campaign by Halo's incredible standards. So... I want Halo Infinite to recapture, to, to bring me back to the top of that mountain, uh, to, to the top of that, uh, th- that, that expectation of what Halo can be. So from what you've seen so far with Halo, which from the first show in, obviously, the internet ran wild with a few things, what did you initially think of what was shown? Was you wow? Was you blown away? Or was it just a bit like, okay, that's interesting? It looked good last year. Um, no, not I'm not speaking visually. No, uh, yeah. that obviously had its own issues. But, but uh, just speaking for like gameplay wise, like I see what they're going for with the sort of wide open Halo ring and the grapple hooks cool. So like it, the gameplay wise, I I was not really super worried about it. I think the story and how the campaign unfolds and what that narrative is, because now we've seen. You know, we saw um, what's his name, the war chief. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on his name now. Your listeners yeah, are going to no. roast me for this. Nah, definitely not. They're nice people. Trust me. They listen to war me. Chief, <laughs> uh, the war chief, whatever his name is. Yeah. So we saw he was kind of the guy. Like, oh, okay, so we're fighting this this sort of rebel brute faction. But then this year at E3, we got that sort of campaign teaser that. They got more into Cortana and what's going on with Chief. And it's like, okay, well, that's what I really want to, like, show me more of that. That's where I'm looking for Halo to go and maybe take me to some emotional places, too. So, yeah, I, I like, if I'm dead honest, I, I am optimistic about Halo Infinite, but I'm still kind of, I'm on the optimistic side of, of neutral. Like, I'm not, I'm not, like, crazy hyped right now. I'd be lying yeah. if I said that. I'm not like, oh, oh my God, this is just going to be the greatest thing of all time. I can't wait. For... And But I'm also not, oh, this looks horrible. I can't believe they're doing it. I'm not, it's not those. Maybe. I'm just sort of, after everything we've been shown, I'm kind of like, okay. Like, I, I'm curious to see where this is going. I'm, I'm, def, I'm a little more optimistic after this campaign trailer we just got at E3. So, yeah, they've got whatever it's going to be. I mean, we're sitting here at the beginning of July. So, you know, we're five months out give or take a few yep. weeks and we'll see you know i'm i'm uh i'm really i but i want there is nothing i want more than for that game for, for to play that game and i and to, to think it's like the best shooter i've played in years that's all i want whether it does that it remains to be seen but i hope it blows me away fair enough my question is a little bit more personal to you Obviously, sure. you're, you've got plenty of friends in the industry and you've been at IGN for such a long time. You've seen a lot of people come and go. Why have you stayed? I saw, obviously, again, Greg Miller, I consider him a friend. We've, we've worked together and stuff. And I see where he went with Kind of Funny and my dream was always to go work there and cover Xbox for them. And I saw the audience, especially with me being super ingrained in the audience, your name was some, a name that would come up constantly. Go get Ryan, go get Ryan, go get Ryan. Was there ever a moment that you thought, I want to go and be, for a lack of a better term, an influencer? I don't want to do the, the video game journalism side of things anymore. Was there ever an inkling of like, I'm going to, oh yeah, I see what's going on with Twitch. I see what's going on with YouTube. I see what Colin's done. I've seen what Greg's done. I've seen what plenty of people have done. Was there ever a moment where you were like, maybe, maybe I should do that? Not yet. Because uh, quite frankly, I work on a team that that I love working with 
I, I, the, the, I mean, that's really the bottom line. It's the people I work with. It's, it's a great team and it's, I, I feel valued. I feel respected at IGN. I, uh, my, I have the creative freedom to go do things I want to do that, that aren't necessarily right within my job description, whether it's, I mean, like I'm not technically a host at IGN like Damon Hatfield, yeah. uh, but I am given the opportunity to do things like host our live e Xbox E3 pre-show and post-show and things like uh, IGN Unfiltered, which is my little, my little niche, tiny, uh, nobody watches it. That's hour not true. Long. I watch it. It's the, the best most... show on IGN. One thousand well, percent. You. It's your best work. By well, a mile. Well, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. But com relative to the rest of IGN's shows that. and content, nobody watches it. Yeah. But it's it's. I feel it's important that because I don't think anybody else in the industry is really doing these long form interviews with developers, and which which I think informs it's it's really revelatory to see like where these people came from and how they got to where they are and. I love doing that. And that's something, again, it's not in my job description. It's not what I was hired to do, but it's something that, that I am, am uh, empowered to do. So, so yeah, I, I am just really happy and I'm able to creatively thrive at IGN. And, and so there's no, there's no need for me to, to go window shopping <laughs> anywhere else. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm really happy with, with the, with the IGN family that I'm a part of. Okay. I respect that. I respect that. Matt, you got anything else before we move into fan stuff? I did have one more, but I closed it down. Oh, no. Okay. So, yes, I did. So, <laughs> you wrote an article a few weeks ago, maybe, or a week ago at this point, saying that you thought this was Xbox's best E3 ever. Yes. Uh, but I was curious to hear what you thought, what, what your personal best E3 ever or be personal best E3 moment ever was. Oh, good one. Yeah, good question. So, um, my personal best E3 moment is definitely the first time that I played Halo 2 multiplayer, which was behind closed doors. That would have been, that was E3 2004, uh, which was the year that Halo 2 came out. The year before, E3 2003, was that incredible jaw-dropping and now kind of infamous campaign demo that was you know, not really real. No, yeah. And then, you know, which I appreciate three, four, three years later has come back and, you know, they live streamed, they, they fired it up again. I don't know if you guys saw that when Frank O'Connor was doing that. Um, but anyway, yeah. Multiplayer it, at E304, they had it behind closed doors. It was a five V five single flag CTF on Zanzibar setup. And you, you know, they were booked wall to wall with appointments. You know, you have to make an appointment because they only have so many slots as the, all day, every day throughout E3. And so sitting down and playing Halo 2 multiplayer for the first time after, I mean, OXM and really any Xbox fan in the original Xbox days, I mean, Halo was everything. Yeah. Halo was everything. And, and we played Halo 1 multiplayer every day at five o'clock at OXM. <laughs> We would literally, like, someone, we, work would be going on, everybody would be on their keyboards, you just hear the, the tapping of keyboards. And then at 5 o'clock, often it was Frank O'Connor, in fact, <laughs> you would hear, you would hear that startup sound of the, the bungee stinger. Yeah. Uh, and then you'd hear, oh, you'd hear the menu screen and be like, <laughs> that's beautiful. That was like the Pavlovian call, like, oh, okay, I guess we're, I'm, we're all going to stop what we're doing now and we're going to play for the last half hour of the day before we all go home. And so that first go with Halo 2 multiplayer was, I don't know if I've ever had more fun uh, in my work, in my actual career, like with games that it was such a blast to, that was, you know, dual wielding for the first time and boarding vehicles and, and the, in the, you know, the graphics were so much better than Halo 1. And it was just, and the, you know, obviously Zanzibar was, in, in hindsight, one of many, many classic maps. I mean, Halo 2, I would argue that no multiplayer game ever, and yes, I realize the hyperbolic nature of what I'm saying, but I stand by it. I don't know <laughs> if there's ever been a, a better collection of maps in a multiplayer game ever. I mean, wow. everything in Halo 2, with like one or two exceptions, like 90% of the maps are, aren't just good maps. They are like all-time bangers. They are just all-time <laughs> incredible multiplayer maps. And so, 
yeah, that that first go with Halo 2, I actually I went back I think a couple more times even though my appointment had been completed and just <laughs> begged Microsoft PR like do you have an open seat can you let Love me it. in and they got me in a couple more times. Nice. And and that and that was yeah, that was that was an absolute blast and I I will always fondly remember that. Fair enough. Love that. That's, that's amazing. That's an amazing story. Uh Crash, you got one more for us? Yeah, um You've had a long career now covering Xbox. If you were to look back at your career, is there a defining moment or two that you could say led you to where you are now? Well, I, don't, hmm, I thought you were going somewhere else with that, but the, the led me to where I am. I don't, I mean, as far as wanting to do this or just things that I've done over the course of my career, I'm not quite sure. You could take that question wherever you want. <laughs> All right, you said there was somewhere else that you thought it was going. If you want to, well, yeah, I, yeah, I thought, yeah, okay. So, just, I mean, in terms of within my career, which again is coming up on two decades now, which is kind of scary, but uh, <laughs> some would argue I've been around too long. But no, definitely uh, not. not at all. Definitely not. Definitely the, uh, not. The, unequivocally, the the best thing I've ever done. Uh, and again, I I don't I say this with pride, and I don't mean it to sound egotistical i it's def i hopefully there's the audience will, will will sense the line here and not think i'm just you know being being an a-hole bragging but because i it really was this was just a a moment that came together and then and it just it's something i'll probably never be able to replicate and that was podcast unlocked episode 201 yep it was supposed to be 200 and it didn't quite work out that way you know as you said mc at the top that you technically already had. You should have just, just done a, 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 a 199.5. Yeah. I'll teach you. Don't worry. I'll teach yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I can relate. So 201, which I shot at E3 in 2015. So it was while everybody's in LA, we had our remote studio set up and our whole set. Yeah. And there were certain people that were going to be at E3. And it, it took me six months. I had been working on it all year. From like right when we get got back from Christmas vacation from holiday break, unlock two hundred one. I somehow convinced Phil Spencer, Peter Moore, yep. and Seamus Blackley to all in, be interviewed by me at the same time. And the idea was, you know, that you had you had every era of Xbox represented. You had Seamus, the creator of the Xbox. You had Phil, who, of course, has been there the whole time, but is the current head of Xbox. And you had Peter Moore, who was the head of Xbox during the glorious Xbox 360 days. And that, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you. I had pages of questions, pages of notes. And the fact that they, that, that, was, that I was able to actually get them all there, and then I was smart enough to mostly stay out of their way while they kind of bounced <laughs> off each other, and I just would kind of guide them with a question every so often. I mean, that I knew 20, 20 minutes into that, I was sitting there with my, like, co like, I, like a real news guy at a real news <laughs> desk with, like, all these papers everywhere. I was like, okay, well, where do I want to go next? Where am I going? And just listening to them talk, like, they had such a respect and a reverence for each other. Yeah. And, and, and they had to have some level of respect for me to even be there. But it was... <laughs> I knew 20 minutes in, I was like, this is, this is amazing. Like this yeah. is, I, I can't believe how incredible this is. And it went on for almost two hours, even though we were only booked for an hour and a half, they were all oh, very wow. gracious. And like, that's, I'll never top that. I don't think I, that's just, that's the coolest thing I've ever done. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, top, it's definitely the top of my 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 CV as a, uh, to, to now that I'm speaking to the Brits, I gotta <laughs> not say resume. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the number one thing that I'll probably never top. No, ma even if my career goes on another twenty years. So that moment for me, I remember. I remember that moment like it was yesterday. I was sat in my bed back at my mum's house. Um, I was watching it, and I think the thing again, you, you as a whole, obviously, you did that, and that's a moment in gaming history, right? You have you have set in stone something that will be watched for years and years and years to come, yeah. and hopefully one day you get to do it again when Phil is older and someone else has come in and maybe yeah, maybe one day right but for yeah. me as someone who was sitting on their bed not knowing I, I didn't know about the industry in that way so to be able to sit there and i wasn't an original xbox guy i was a ps2 guy but i didn't know about 
I didn't know about Seamus Blackley. I didn't know the history. I didn't know about the Duke. I didn't. Right. I I touched these controllers and I played these games and I'd been around these systems, but I didn't know the history. And again, I'm dyslexic, so reading for me, if 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 somebody goes out there and writes that article, it doesn't make it to me. So it being in a podcast form where I get to sit down in front of a TV and just listen to these creative geniuses in a way and these these marketing men and just everything about Xbox and get to experience that is something that I will never forget. That was I was going to bring that up, so I'm glad we got there in the end. And yeah, thank you for doing that. And I'm glad I'm glad for you. It seemed like it was perfect because watching it on the outside, it was like this is magic. It's ridiculous. Well, thank you. You're very kind. I mean, that's. That's the one where, like, I wish that had a million views on it on YouTube. Like, it's... It deserves I, it, yeah. It does deserve it, yeah. <laughs> it's some, like, it's still kind of, I think a lot of people haven't seen it and don't know about it, but if you're, yeah, if you're a big Xbox fan and you want to kind of go back and hear from... Uh, there are a million great stories in that. Like, Peter Moore tells the story, like, the behind-the-scenes story of the Red Ring of Death, of, yeah. like, having to go to Steve Ballmer and Bill Gates and be like... Yeah, we have a problem and we need to spend a lot of money to deal with it or else things could go. I mean, it's there are so many good stories in it. And and uh, Seamus, who's just completely like no filter on that dude. And I yeah. love him to death. Um, he tells the story of like of taking of trying to like bring Xbox to Japan, which, of course, didn't go well yeah. in the beginning. And there, there's a million great Xbox stories in it. So if you're ever curious, if anybody out there, maybe some of your your younger viewers that, that yeah. like you're saying, maybe they just came up in the 360 era and and don't, you know, have this, maybe they have a, a reverence and a, and a love for original Xbox, but don't know, maybe, but maybe they didn't live it. Yeah. Uh, you could go back. Yeah, Unlocked 201. Yeah, it's definitely worth listening. All right, let's get some of these viewer questions done, guys. Uh, Matt P, do you want to take the first one and read that one off for us? Sure, can do. This is from Jesper on Twitter, who said, congratulations on the big 300, guys. Inspired by DMC Ryan's Coexist shirt, it would be cool mm -hmm. to hear Ryan's reflections on the current state of console warfare on today's yeah. gaming scene and what he would propose the community do. Sorry, what he would propose the community can do to move forward beyond this toxic fanboyism. I knows? would, boy, if I had an answer to that, I think I'd be a rich man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, my little contribution to that was to was uh, to sell a T-shirt that said "coexist" on it with a an anthropomorphic Xbox controller, like high fiving yeah. with a an anthropomorphic PlayStation controller. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's I don't know that it's that's a larger issue of toxicity just on social media in general. It's not unique to games, and yep, I I. I I just try I, tr I try my best. I'm human and I don't always follow my own advice. I just try my best to not engage with it. Mm. Um, like there were people like I shouldn't even give this air, but just to, to speak to your point, like I had so I had not to make this about me because this is about you guys and your awesome 300. Nah, it's all episode. about you. It's all about you, baby. It's all about you. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, I just had unlocked 500 this yes. week, so we're, you know, we're a little ahead of you, but you guys mm -hmm. are catching up because <laughs> we usually take a week or two off a year. We'll get you one day. <laughs> we'll get you yeah, one day. In a decade, we'll catch up. Yeah. <laughs> You'll catch, I, I, I've, I'm no doubt you will. Um, but, uh, but like it was, it's just that human nature thing, right? We're 99 percent of the feedback was like, this is great. Love hearing from Phil. You guys asked some great questions. And it's not that I did a perfect job. It's not that I should be praised universally for it. But there's there's just, you get that 1% of people who, and it's, I don't know, this, there are just people that seem to thrive on the negativity because what I saw was there was, there was like this one mildly nonsensical comment about, about that I, ask the same questions over and over and, and this mm. and that. And it's like, well, okay. I mean, it's not really constructive. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but what I have, what, so like, I just block now and yeah. I, because, <laughs> and, and those people seem to think that like, you know, that I'm weak or whatever. Like, I don't, it's, the thing is, if you're shitty to me, yeah. why would I ever want to hear from you? Because exactly. this is like a voluntary Twitter is not like your, your, 
constitutional uh, right or, or you know, whatever binding legal no, uh, document in your yeah. country. <laughs> yeah. like, it's not it's not a it's not a given human right. It's like yeah. we're here because we choose to be. And so we get to we get to choose the voices we hear from and interact with. And it's like if you're awful to me. Why would I ever want to hear from you again? Yep. So just block. I don't care. You can go screenshot that I blocked yep. you and go, you know, talk shit with your friends about me. I don't care. Yep. Like, it's yep. just like they're who like you're arguing about like you're getting this riled up about toys. Yep. These are toys. Plastic boxes, yeah. as I like to call them. The, which piece it's of a, plastic do you want to play with? Enthusiast hobby. It's like it's like if if, you know, I worked on a site about about collecting action figures yep and like the gi joe fans were were hating me because i like didn't do a good enough job interviewing the you know the the hasbro guy about <laughs> it's just but, like what how does this make sense it's it's just it's you just take a step back like yeah. and it's, it gets it's just so utterly ridiculous sometimes so that I'm I'm getting too deep into the weeds, but I think that's really what what I would say is you know it's just I just try not to engage with it. And that would be the advice I would give to others. It's like because the, a lot of these people they don't want they they're not interested in a reasonable conversation. Not yet. they just want to yell and scream about things, and they thrive on the conflict. I don't understand the psychology be, behind that. I don't know why. I don't know what like as an armchair psychiatrist. With no degree whatsoever, I would suggest that they're probably angry or unhappy with something yeah. in their life, right? That's that they're, it, right? they're on I here think, like. I think the thing for ahead. me, the thing I think, the thing for me that I found again, I am, I am, I've been doing this now six years of my own back, and I'm only sort of now getting to that level of notoriety where people pay attention to what I tweet, which is super right. weird to me. And obviously that's because of being on the shows I've been on and now building the fan base, right? And I agree with you. And I will admit, unfortunately, I'm only just learning to stop poking the bear because I love to poke the bear on Twitter a little bit as Crash will cut his eyes at me, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't ever do it on a case of like, I, I just look at the industry and you've been covering it as long as I have, right? And I started this podcast during the Xbox One era. So yeah. that was when there was yeah, the no con years. there was yeah. no content. There was nothing to talk about. <laughs> Everything was super. Oh, this game wasn't very good, and this game wasn't very good, and this happened. And now that we have a, we're in a, we are in a good place. And when I say we, are, Xbox is in a good place. I have no investment Absolutely. in Xbox, mm -hmm. so it's not really a we. Um, we're in a good place as a podcast. We're in a good place as a community. We're growing. We're getting good games. We're getting acquisitions that are going to benefit the box in which we all choose to play on. Can't we just celebrate it? Can't we just be happy? No. And can't we just be like, oh, <laughs> like I, the the whole conversation I had around Housemark, and I pointed out on Twitter, it's like, oh, it was interesting that no one complained that Housemark got bought by Sony, but anytime Xbox buys anything, there was usually a bit of a kickback. And the problem everyone was was they bought Bethesda. I was like, I am not talking about Bethesda. I'm talking about anything that was bought by Microsoft. <laughs> There is a huge community of people, and as people like to remind me, maybe it's just the, the echo chamber in which I'm in, which is right. a lot of PlayStation fans because of the community I'm a part of. And I was just like, but this is weird to me. But I'm, I'm more just pointing it out as a fact of like, huh, that's interesting. But people take it as like a visual attack on them. Like I've, I've absolutely just been like, PlayStation sucks. And duh, duh, duh. I'm like, <laughs> dude, that's not, I have everything. I play on everything. I love video games. Like, can't we just enjoy yeah. playing video games? It's a, it's a weird space we operate in I, I think yeah it really is and, and i and like you know the, to finish my point about unlock 500 i yeah. saw like there was this one sort of nonsensical post and i was like okay whatever and just like it, you know again they were being awful to me so block yeah. and but then what i saw is that that person's circle i guess yeah like they they literally copy pasted the same the exact same tweet like not mm. an original thought like yeah and and a bunch of them just kept pasting it and sending me the same thing so it's like i don't understand like why like what yeah. do you have an do you have an, your own thought about <laughs> about the yeah. interview about the sh so it's it's all it's just so the psychiatry and the psychology behind it is 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 weird to me and yeah i mean and then you know the other side of it is you know when i'm 
Like IGN has afforded me a large following, right? Yeah. Like the only reason people follow me is because I work for IGN. It's not like, I mean, You're good when looks. I was at OXM, I had looks. no followers. Not that OX, I mean, because mostly OXM was a big magazine, but it didn't have an online presence. And so like if I, if I hit back, it's, oh, I'm punching down yep. and it's like, it's still a bad look. So it's like, you know, you just, it's no fun to read people saying horrible things about you and your work. But there's, you just, there's, you just gotta, like, I, I try very hard and I don't always succeed to just scroll on by. But yeah, like, that's, that's the thing as far as there, I don't think there's a cure for the toxic gaming community because we just live in a tribalist society, whether it's yep. sports, whether it's politics, whether it's hobbies, video games. Uh, I see it in the Tesla community, which is a, that's sort of my side thing. I do a lot of stuff with Tesla. Yeah. And it's like, I see that with like, you know, gas powered cars, you know, and, and Tesla people, it's, there's just like, everything has this sort of tribalistic nature of, you know, if you're not in my camp, you're wrong. And I hate you. And I hate everything you stand for. And it's, you know, I just try my best to just like, sometimes I mute. And if you're, if you're really awful, I'll hit block. And you just, you just got to try and move on. And it's that, that, that's if maybe if we could all just try to you know scroll by yeah <laughs> maybe it would die down a little i don't know probably not but it's a strange like place but but yeah like engage with the it's, it's not that people can't criticize you i mean i i'm you know there are definitely i've taken plenty of good feedback from people that is constructive but you know that's in engage with you know with with the with the good and with the constructive and i just yeah. try not to engage with the with the trolls agree on, Matt, That's what I was going to say. I was just going to say, look, like you said, 90% of the comments are positive and lovely, yeah. but you scroll through and that one will catch your yeah. eye and It'll that's the one you end up interacting with yeah. in some way, right? If it's blocking or whatever, and you're like, oh, I should have just liked five of the nice tweets and then put my phone away. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's yeah. so hard. It's so hard to do though. We are, we're going to move on, but it's it's really hard to do. It's, again, I do not get, I do not get yeah. on the level of what you get, Ryan, but yeah, it's and, really hard. And just as a final point to this, it's important to remember too, like, you know, I, I almost feel bad that we've that I've sat here prattling on about this for five minutes because no, it, the majority of the community yep. is good and it is they're perfectly reasonable, normal people that don't have some weird social media axe to grind. And it's like you to, to you know, that's where like if you look at the like a good way to I think to see that now, I'll bet I'll bet this applies to your show as well. The. The upvotes and downvotes on YouTube. Yep. Like that's, I think that's such a, that's a much more passive interaction, right? Where like you look at uh, Unlocked 500 this week, it's like the ratio is like 50 to one of yeah. thumbs up to thumbs down. And that's a better metric of, you know, the, the, where people, people, people that like it might not might not necessarily take to Twitter or to the YouTube comments and go, yeah. wow, this was amazing. Thank you guys. But they'll just go click thumbs up and then they move on and they yep. go on with their day. And so that's like, that's where you got to try and just remember the bigger picture. Like the, that, you know, I, I know silent majority gets yep. kind of thrown mm -hmm. around a lot, but it really is. It's like, it's people that, that are the, <laughs> the normal, reasonable people. And it's not to say that they, they didn't, they didn't, you know, maybe dislike parts of it where they might go, oh, well, gee, Ryan, I wish you'd asked Phil this, but they're not going to like make that, they're not going to just burn down the whole podcast because of the, <laughs> because of yeah. that one thing, yeah. right? So it's, yeah, it's important to remember, even as I ramble on about, about that sort of toxicity and what have you, that the, that most people are totally great and reasonable, normal, wonderful people. 1,000%, a thousand percent. Crash, do you want to take our next uh, viewer question? Yes. Shotgun McPain asks, with Microsoft acquiring so many studios over the past few years, are you more excited to see what the power of Xbox does with existing franchises or what they can do with new IPs? Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> I guess both is a cheat answer. You know, I, don't, I think that's they're not looking for, for the both answer, but but yeah, like I mean, I'm, I mean, Avowed isn't technically a new IP because it's within the Pillars of Eternity universe, but like oh. Avowed is definitely on the short list of of first party games that have been announced that I'm most excited for because 
there, there's just all this new untapped potential there uh, from, I mean, you look at Obsidian, a developer with a phenomenal track record over the years who I don't think it's disrespectful to say they've never quite had that, like, ultra breakout hit. You know, they've mm. had, you know, Fallout New Vegas is, I think, probably we'd all agree that's their their most yeah. recognized game, uh, arguably their best game. But even that, like, has this famous story attached to it where they didn't get their bonus from Bethesda because they missed the Metacritic point by one from, you know, so if they'd had three to six more months of polish, maybe it, you know, gets over that hump. And then, like, you know, uh, South Park, the Stick of Truth, again, like, great game, but... But um, like they they had that uh, they had that taken from them toward, towards the the latter part of it, if I'm remembering that correctly. And like um, uh, Alpha Protocol was a really neat concept, but just yeah. was super undercooked. And like they've never and where I'm going with this is like the reason I'm so excited for Avowed as a as a mostly new thing is it it's going to be Obsidian making a game with all the budget they need and all the time they need like they'll which they've art they've probably never had that before at least yeah. from what we know about their history they always seem to kind of get like short change somehow whether it's kotor 2 when lucas was like you guys it's it's holiday you guys got to ship this and so yeah. there was kind of <laughs> no ending on the game like so you know they've they've just been like bit by this bug of bad luck so many times and now here's Avowed, a, a first-person role-playing game, you know, fantasy fantasy universe that will have the full backing of a $1.4 trillion company. So it's like, the, there's, it's, we're going to see Obsidian at their, like, finally unleashed, right, with their full potential. So that's exciting. But then, like, I would say both Fable and Perfect Dark as revivals of brands of games that that have been loved in the past where like fable i'm a major fable fan yep. uh fable 2 is one of i still think probably if you were to make a list of the top 10 best Freak Six xbox games? exclusives period uh, in the entire I mean, history yeah. of xbox it's probably it probably cracks that top 10 yeah I um so. i don't know if it would quite crack my top five but it's it would Almost certainly cracked my top ten. Well, okay, let me ask you this and, one real quick: Would Sunset yeah. Overdrive get in there? Yeah, it's probably near the. It, it would. I don't. Again, probably not top five, but it's in the top ten. Okay, cool. That game <laughs> so good, still so good. Um, but anyway, like you know, and then Fable. Like, let's be honest: Microsoft killed Fable by yes. mismanaging Lionhead. By mm -hmm. they pivoted that entire studio towards making like sort of a game as a service 4v1 it was like, so bad you know, i played it, it i don't care and, and it <laughs> i like i wrote a preview i remember my first piece it was at e3 microsoft was not thrilled with it i wrote a i wrote a piece and i believe the headline was something along the lines of fable legends forgets what made fable special or something yep. along those lines and and i stand by that today like you know yeah. It's not that Legends itself was a bad game. It's just like, why are you doing this with Fable? Fable. Like this mm. doesn't make sense. And and unfortunately, it took the whole studio down because the entire like the people they had hired, they, like their expertise was then in these multiplayer service based things. And so yeah. when Legends didn't work and they killed it, it was like, well, uh, we can't rebuild. We can't build a new Fable with what we've got here. So the whole thing's gonna get shut down. So and and thankfully that Microsoft has learned its lessons and and from everything we've seen that Microsoft is gone and and the new Microsoft says we're not going to change your studio you guys do you we acquired you to do your thing so go do it and we're going to just going to back you up with resources and so this new Fable we don't know anything about it yet None. you know we got this one teaser trailer but that teaser. All it, it succeeded in doing the one thing I needed it to do, which was to show me that Playground understands the tone That's, of Fable. Yep. And they That's completely exactly. nailed that for me. So I can't wait to see what they do with it. And then the initiative, 
this new like super team built in Santa Monica, which is this incredible development hotbed of people like, you know, you've got, of course, uh, you've got Corey Barlog's team down there. You've got, uh, you've got um, the Treyarch team down. There's like a million incredible game development studios, uh, Insomniacs down there uh, or near there. Um, you got all these. It's such a great pool of talent, and now they're they're going in on a new Perfect Dark and rethinking that. Like, yes, I cannot wait to see what that's all about. So, yeah, it's a mix of like I can't wait to see these new reimaginings of old things, but definitely also old, uh, just brand new IPs. You know, we know In Exile's working on a couple new Unreal Engine Five RPGs. So there's. There's a lot to be optimistic about, and I can't wait to see how these next few years unfold. Yeah, no, you you hit the nail on the head there. I think from we've spoken about it on the podcast often, right? We we're like we're all so excited for what's to come from Xbox, and I think it was that initial. Um, it wasn't exactly it wasn't at E3. It was like their their announcement that the announcement thing they did before the Series X came out, right? And the S, and I was like, oh, for me, I'm a huge State of Decay fan, thanks to you, because I remember reading your review oh God, for so it, and I didn't love two because it didn't do the things yeah, I either. quite wanted from it. But I'm super yeah. optimistic for three, and then Undead yes. Labs becoming in house and things like that. Exactly. Like the whole tone of it, which for me, I'm like, okay, I'm. Now, give me this AAA game. Um, yes. We've got a couple more questions I want to really get through before we get rid of you, uh, before you run away and have to do some real work. Um, <laughs> so let's go with this one from Little Smee. He says, congrats on 300. My question is for the whole My Xbox and Me team and Ryan. What is the coolest merch item you have in your collection? And was it bought a bought item or was it a freebie from a dev slash industry member? Ryan, I'd love to hear your thoughts. As, mm. as someone for me, I've I've started to start receive things from from PR and uh, yeah. yeah, I'd love to know if you've got one thing that sticks out in your mind that you've been sent. Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's been a lot over the years. I mean, we we have a uh, we have an ethics policy at IGN. We don't accept gifts that are Got larger yeah. than sixty dollars in value, which is the yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess maybe I guess it's seventy now. The price of a game, basically. <laughs> <Yep>. But <laughs> yeah, I don't makes know. Sense. I mean, I guess boy, that would be. Did you get the Tesla thing? The Tesla thing in the background there. That's from. Is that for the podcast? Oh, no, Did I bought that. that. that oh, was... you bought the, it. Does that count? You bought it. It's even bought, bought or that. it's bought or um, given. So, <laughs> well, but that's not a video game. Thing. I, yeah, that's that's a really good. I'm just like looking around. Yeah. Because now that my home is my office, I've I've just purged a lot of stuff. Because I live in a you know it's a, San Francisco like London. There's not a lot of space. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what? I wish I had a great answer to this. My, mine is my Dirt 5 toolbox. As some of you may, may remember, uh, Codemaster sent me a toolbox for Dirt 5, and it came with <laughs> a bunch of food inside of it, some headphones, and it's, a, it's an actual proper toolbox with like everything nice. in it. That is by far uh -huh. pink. I think there's only like, I think there's only 150 of them made, and I've got one of them with a number on it. So yeah, one day I'll have a big enough space to actually show it off. That's my number one. Crash, have you got an item that, that sits in your heart that you love? Uh, I don't know if you'd consider it a merch item, but the Gears of War Xbox One S. Yeah, that counts. I I'll give you it. Yeah. Counts. yeah, that for sure is like out of everything I've ever gotten is probably like just the quality of that Xbox. Like, because when you see custom Xboxes, it's usually just the paint job. But the right. fact that one has engravings and it comes with the controller that has engravings as well, that's yeah. probably it for me. And the sand. It's a good Don't one. forget the sand. The sound the sa as well, yeah. I just I remember just me and you like, being Discord and I just hear like, <laughs> oh, Chris is to tell on his Xbox. Okay, yep, yeah, cool, cool. Matt, what about you? Have you got anything? Um, I, I, the only thing that's springing to mind is quite boring. Recently, D Brand sent over the uh, black PlayStation Five plates, and yeah. I hate the look of PlayStation Fives. Anything that can hide that a little bit more for me in my living room and make it hide away in the living room a little bit more, I'm all for. So I'm pretty Cr excited about them. I haven't put them on yet, but Chris, what am I gonna say? Crash. This is well, an Xbox podcast and you're talking about PlayStation plays. Every time. Every Ryan, I don't know if you've ever had it, where your co-host <laughs> just decides they are a PlayStation. Want to talk about PlayStation on the show constantly. I'm like, it's not quite here. Hey, we can coexist, but it's my Xbox and me, not my PlayStation and me. We have another brand for that. Come on. God damn it. Uh, let's go through a couple more of these. Luke Alderslayer says, congrats on 300, a monumental achievement and really shows your dedication and love for Xbox. My question is, looking back over the last 300 episodes and how Xbox 
Xbox has evolved. What is the most standout moment? Uh, also, what moment do you think was the turning point for Xbox um, writing the ship on the Xbox One launch? This is a pretty obvious answer. I think I know what you're going to say, Ryan, but we'll still let you say it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, you know, you it wasn't, you couldn't say it at the time. You had to give it, give it some time to, yeah. to be able to look back. But it's certainly when, uh, when Phil Spencer was named head of Xbox and moved up from, from just running studios to running the whole darn thing. Yep. That has proven to be the correct move <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, yeah, sure. you know, Don Matrick out. Um, some of the other executives were out and then having Phil come in, that, uh, who you know, because the thing about Phil Spencer and the reason that the community loves him, and rightfully so, he he obviously has a ton of experience, you know, 30 years this guy's been doing it, all at Microsoft. So he knows the company, he knows the Xbox, but the thing is, he's a gamer. And I'm not saying like, hey, you know, you look at a Bobby Kotick, not a gamer, yeah. and a lot of the gaming community does not think well of him no. because, you know, of his business practices. But as a businessman, the guy is ruthlessly successful. But Phil is able to be successful, but he's also a legitimate, hardcore, passionate gamer who understands and respects the creativity of games and the process of making games. And so that's, you know, you put that guy in charge when your brand has been... Destroyed. has been taken down a peg i mean you know the 360 era we we all remember it it was microsoft was they could do no wrong they were they'd made every correct decision everything was great and then they you know they made some decisions that were not the right decisions for the xbox one and and phil has uh you know you can't it, it wasn't a problem that could be solved overnight but now you look back phil has been on the job for seven years and you look you look now at where they are versus where they were when when they when he took over 7 years ago it's night and day and and so that's that is definitely the turning point i don't think there's any question about that you um you said something on your 500 episode of unlocked to um to feel about backwards compatibility i believe someone on the panel asked about it and i remember at the moment i am very much a new old games old type of guy i play we again i'm in a very privileged position where a lot of pr people send me their games as a streamer as a yeah. quote-unquote influencer i know that i am in a privileged position and now game pass even more so it makes everyone be able to get a lot of things day one especially from what we saw from uh the xbox showing but you mentioned backwards compatibility during episode 500, and I remember when that moment was said, and I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's a big deal, but it, it didn't seem that big a deal to me because I didn't care. And now we look at the way cross-save has happened in Xbox and cross-progression and backwards compatibility, and I feel like that was the moment that... I understand Phil obviously made that happen and I'm sure lots of hardworking people, not to just give the credit to Phil because I know it's not just one man that does that, but... That moment for me has really transcended through what the Series X and S is. Because I remember, Crash will remember when we spoke about it, about um, what was the tagline they were using uh, for Xbox uh, Play Anywhere. What, what was it? What was the oh, exact okay. tagline they were using when they were promoting the Series X? Um, I've, it's oh. gone out of my mind now anyway. But they were using a specific thing and I was like, it's marking, it's marking, it's marking. It's not real. Don't believe it. I sat here saying it every week. And then we do get our hands on the PS5 and we just see how much of a hassle it is to upload your save and then do this with your save and some things might not work. And I feel like that moment doesn't quite get the credit it deserves for what it did moving forward with Xbox. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just play a game backwards compatible. It sort of had a knock-on effect throughout the whole system. So that's, that's a, a moment for me that really sticks out. Have, have any of you guys got anything before we let Ryan go? Just to piggyback off what you were saying, like, yeah, Xbox are in this place now where everything kind of just works. Like, I've been testing xCloud on as many different devices as I can yeah. this week. And um, just jumping to Gears 5, like, just Crazy. brought me straight back in where it was. Straight back in where it With was. With your on every different device. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. <laughs> and it's just, it just works. And then Ghost of Tsushima gets announced for an upgrade. And I'm like, yeah, I'll drop $30 on it and mess up my save transfer, I'm sure. Like, <laughs> I just know I'll do it somehow. Um, but yeah, the Xbox are in this place now where it, it just works. It like works as you expect it to work. And it's really exciting. 
All right, I've got two quick questions, Ryan, and then you're out of here. Yeah. Last, this one's from Canada. I know you're going to care about this one. How ecstatic are you about the Phoenix Suns reaching the NBA Finals? <laughs> Follow up, would you rather face the Bucks or the Hawks? So how ecstatic are you, and which one would you rather see I, uh, face? It, so, uh, yeah, I grew up an Arizona sports fan, which has uh, been something of a tortured sports fan existence. <laughs> Not that there are <laughs> other cities that are also long-suffering sports cities. Yeah. But f- the the collection of prof- f- professional Arizona sports teams has one, co- one combined world championship <sighs> ever out of, <laughs> out of the uh, baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. <laughs> that's it. It's one, and, and even that's... This is the 20th anniversary of that championship, oh. which was my Arizona Diamondbacks beating the Yankees after 9-11 in a, in a classic seven-game World Series, one of the best World Series ever played. And so the Suns haven't been to the finals since 1993. I was, uh, I guess at the time, I was 12 years old, and I was uh, that they faced off against Michael Jordan and the Bulls, and uh, you know how that ended. Yep. So the Suns have... <laughs> They've never won a championship, and they've they haven't even been there for almost thirty years. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I uh, I've been watching them all season, and they, it's just been a, an incredible ride. And and they're you know with all due respect to Giannis and Trey Young, there's no Michael Jordan standing between them and the title right. this time. I know Giannis is a two time MVP, so I don't want to discount that, but <laughs> he's all he's not the greatest player to ever have played professional basketball before yeah. so i don't really want to spit in the face of the sports gods by saying who i'd rather face yeah i think the suns have a legit chance i'm not saying you know it's it's in the bag by any means but i think they've got a good shot against either of those teams i mean the, the hawks are the lower seed they're the you know they're more of the upstart that's really not supposed to be here, so to speak. So, yeah. you know, on paper, you might say Atlanta, but, you know, it's, I, I would not, I would not want to want to tempt fate by, <laughs> by suggesting it. I mean, as we record this, Milwaukee's up 3-2 in that series yeah. after neither Giannis nor Trey played uh, in the, the game five because yeah. of uh, both were injured. And so we'll see how, how that, how, how that goes with the with game six and if necessary a game seven but but yeah it's uh it is a thrill for me because even again you just real quick go back any of my arizona sports teams not only is there one championship ever and that was 20 years ago but the last time any of the four of them were even in the championship, championship game, game yeah was 2009 when the cardinals played a thriller of a super bowl and lost in the at the last second to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh yeah. So it's been that was that's twelve years or yeah twelve years ago. So it's, we haven't even you know I, I live in the San Francisco area, which is I, I wish I could be a San Francisco sports fan, but I'm not yeah. from here. That's not yeah. how. It's not how sports work. <laughs> it's like the the San Francisco Giants baseball team has won three championships in the last decade. Yeah. So has the Golden State Warriors basketball yep. team. They had a dynasty. The 49ers haven't won a Super Bowl, but they did make the Super Bowl just a, a few years ago. Uh, and I think the San Jose Sharks might have even made the cup final. I don't think they won it. But yeah, so it's like. You, just just to compare, you know, it's the, the Bay Area teams are, are are like constantly in the in the yeah. finals and and often winning them. But the uh, yeah, Arizona sports fans, uh, this is a big moment for us. Oh, trust me, I can relate. I'm a Tottenham fan in the in the Premiership, and uh, yeah, we don't we don't win anything, Kiva. We're the laughing stock of the league, so uh, everyone takes the mic out of us. I understand. My last question for you is one that is is oh, it's a hot topic around here, Ryan. I've got to tell you, it's a hot topic, which is. Are the Xbox games with gold games free? Well, not technically. Still... That's right, Ryan. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. No, seriously, finish off. Finish off. <laughs> <laughs> but the, that's the thing I always ask people because people love to show, throw in my face when I complain about the games with gold. And people who say they're free, they're free, they're free. And I'm like, no, they're not free. We pay for them. We pay for this service. It should be better. But you've said what I needed to hear, Ryan. You've been amazing. Let's plug, plug, plug <laughs> and get ourselves out of here. Ryan, where can people find you, especially that Tesla podcast? 
Oh, sure. So, yeah, Podcast Unlocked. If you can't get enough of Xbox each week besides my Xbox and me and you want to <laughs> come hang with us as well, Podcast Unlocked on uh, on YouTube.com uh, slash IGN Games or any of your favorite podcast services. And then, yeah, my little uh, passion side project outside of IGN, I host a weekly Tesla podcast where, like you, I never miss a week. You know, I think it's I, I respect the hustle on your part because I, I share it. It's you know, there are so many free shows and podcasts out there that if you cannot be reliable for your yep. audience, if you if they cannot depend on you being there every week, they're going to go find something else to listen to. So I, I uh, absolutely tip my cap to you guys for never missing a week with my Xbox and me. I, I'm that way with my Tesla podcast, which is called Ride the Lightning. So if you're interested in Tesla, if you want to learn more, uh, you can find me. I would just say Google "ride the lightning Tesla" and you'll you'll probably find it. Okay, okay. Uh, Matt P, where can people find you? Follow me, Matt P video, and all the things. Follow the my Xbox and me TikTok, but mainly go check out that podcast because it's awesome. Crash, give me a proper plug this week, dude. Come on, give it to me. I believe proper in you. Plug. Uh, go drop a review on the my Xbox. And Apple page. <laughs> He does it every week, Ryan. Ryan, he does it every week. He won't give us a proper plug ever. He just goes, yeah, whatever. Just go do whatever. You can find me everywhere at MC Fixer. My big thing is, obviously, we're going to have an influx of people listening. Please, if you did enjoy this, please hit the subscribe button on your podcast service. Obviously, if you're into visuals more, youtube.com slash my Xbox and me. And if you want to follow me on my personal channels, it's at MC Fixer everywhere. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I am there. Ryan, thank you very much very much for being on episode 300 we'll see you again in another 300 episodes congratulations <laughs> on 300 guys appreciate it goodbyes thank you bye <laughs>